Hello everyone, this is Emp here bringing you another RenPy tutorial. Today we're going to go over screens and how to make your own custom screens and also how to use styles. So as before, we're going to start with the basic script that comes when you create a new RenPy game. First thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call that custom screens.rpy. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a screen. Now screens have a lot of different things you can add to them, but I found some things that are more common than others for how to, at least for my usage. And those things that are most common are HBox, VBox, and Grid, and then combinations thereof. So let's make an HBox one. Screen HBox screen HBox text button one text button two. Now these text buttons won't do anything right now because they don't have any actions associated with them, so they won't be uh, sensitive. And we can go over that later, but basically if you have an action assigned to it, it can hover. If you don't, it doesn't. So let's say right here, show screen, HBox screen. And let's see what happens when I run it. Oh, one more thing. If you're using Sublime, at least, when you make a new file, You'd better change it from tabs to spaces, otherwise it's not going to be happy with you. Okay, let's try it now. Okay. There it is. One, two. As you can see, they're in a horizontal line, one after the other. Now, what if I want to change where this is? I can give this some properties like X align 0.5, Y align 0.5, those are positional properties. I can give it spacing 5, so that's 5 pixel spaces be spacing between each item. And let's see what happens then. There it is in the center, and there's some space between them as opposed to before when it was really nice and tight. Now I'm going to go over styles right now. For a style, all it really is, is a collection of different properties that are set. So style, let's call it centered style. Let's say X align 0.5, Y align 0.5, spacing 5. So I can take this out and I can just say style centered style. And we will end up with exactly the same thing as before. See, there it is. Now, why is this useful? This is useful because maybe you have more than one screen or more than one screen component that you want to apply these styles to. So it basically is a way to save typing and to help keep things more consistent with one another. But you can also override styles. So if I put spacing 10 right here, that's going to be more immediate than the spacing 5 in the style. And so we should see that it's going to have more space in between it. And it does. Good. And in case that's hard to see, you can try bumping up the spacing as much as you want, but I'm going to leave it that way for now. Next up, I'm going to add some parameters to my screen. Now parameters are information that something takes in, either a function or a screen in this case, that helps it do its job and helps you customize it more so that you only need to define it once and you can do different things with it. So let's go one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to say, give it numbers. Now, right now, this is not going to do anything because my screen doesn't take any parameters. So I'm going to take in numbers. Let's, say, let's take in buttons because they're going to be text buttons. So let's say instead of saying one and two, we'll do four button in buttons, text button, button. And let's see how that works. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Now, what happens if I don't give it anything? What happens if I forgot to add this numbers here? Well, I end up with an error because it's a required parameter and how you make it not required is by adding a default. A default is what will happen, what your parameter will be if there's not any given. It's, but to do that, you say equals. And so for that, I'm going to say test. So now what happens? And it just shows test and it doesn't complain at you. So default values are your friend. Let's give ourselves a size as well. And let's make the default 30. Button, let's say action null and text size, text size. Now this looks a little bit weird because we're using text size twice in a row, but this one right here is talking about the property. And this one right here is referring to the variable, which is our parameter. So it works. So let's see what happens if I give it numbers and 50. There it goes. And because I have an action now, even though it's a nothing action, I can highlight these text buttons. Okay. We're going to do a little bit more before we move on to the VBox, and that's going to be when we want to do box wrapping. So I'm going to say right here, let's say X maximum is 300 pixels. If we do this again, we're going to find out that it looks exactly the same, and I'm going to tell you why. The reason is because by default, it goes over the end when it reaches the end. But if we put box, it's not bow, box wrap true here, then we see the behavior we want. Okay. Moving on to VBox. V box, just like you think H box is, is a vertical box. Let's take in buttons as well. And a text size. We make a V box instead of an H box. Let's say X align 0.1 y line 0 0.1 and we'll say spacing 5 then we say for button in buttons we're going to make a text button button with action null and text size text size then in our script we still have to show it and we want to still show our Xbox screen. So how about after this hello world, we're going to hide 
the HBox screen. And we're going to show screen, oops, hide screen, VBox screen, numbers 50. Let's see what happens then. So here's my first one. There's my second one. Just as you thought, it's going vertically. That's it. That's for it for V-boxes. Next up is grids. Let's make a grid. A grid, if we look at the documentation for it here, says it takes two parameters. The first is the number of columns, so how many wide it is, and the second is the number of rows, so how many tall it is. So if I want to take my numbers in here, I'm going to have to either be really specific, which means that I won't that it won't work for all cases, or I can make it more general with a little bit more work. So let's say grid two, two by length of buttons divided by two plus one. Let's make spacing five, X line 0.8, Y line 0 0.1. So that's going to be on the right side. Then we're going to say four button in buttons. Button, button. Action null. Text size, text size. But in this case, we're going to have two times three plus one, four grid spaces, so that's eight, and seven items in there, because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if you look up here. So what we need to do is we need to add an optional extra, so four uh, I in range from zero to length of buttons divided by two plus one and then times two minus length of buttons then we do null which is just saying put something empty in there so that it doesn't complain that the grid is not full so let's make it happen now hide screen vbox screen show screen, grid screen, numbers 50. And let's see what happens. If I didn't make any mistakes, it should look like that. So it fills from rows first and then columns. If you tell it to transpose, which is a property if you say set transpose to equal true, then you will have it so that that it um, goes the opposite way. It goes, it will go row first and then columns first. So really, you can do it however you want. That's it for this part of the tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed it and found it helpful to you. Next up is we're going to make combination screens and talk a little bit more about styling.